I'm Sherry and today I'm going to be doing my very first garden tour of the 2021 gardening season. Now I thought that it would be really fun for us to kind of walk around, look at the gardening spaces that I have while I do some chores that I have to do in the garden. For example, I have to put out some plant markers. There are some cucumber seeds that I want to plant because my cucumber seedlings aren't doing too great. I also want to throw out some of these uh, yellow sticky bug tapes, see if I can catch some um, squash beetles that are attacking everything. And I might even stop by the potato patch and see if any of the plants actually need to have some more hay mounted up around them. So for those of you that are new to my channel, I live in Ontario, Canada, growing zone 5B, and the property that I garden on is approximately three and a half acres. Two, just over two acres are is basically cleared, and that's where our house is. Now, I wish that all of my gardening space was, when, was in one area and I could just walk you through that area, but that's not how it's happened. So when we moved to this property, there was one gardening area and it was a low raised bed garden. And I think at the time there were five raised beds in there. Since then, we've added four more and we've increased our gardening space throughout the whole property. So I'm going to be walking you through and showing you a few things from our food forest that we just created in the fall of 2020. I'm going to walk you through that original raised bed area. I'm going to then take you over to the hill garden, which we actually created the first year we got here and have been increasing that space since then. And then I want to show you the new waist high raised beds that we just built. And I don't want to forget about the 275 feet of garden space that is around our pool fence where I've planted a ton of garlic, strawberries, raspberries, uh, walking Egyptian walking onions, and you name it, I've thrown it in there. So let's get going. The first thing that I wanted to show you guys was an update on the chicken garden. And so look at these sunflowers. If I get down right low, you can see that some of them are actually taller than a foot already. Now what I've done is I planted them in accordance to size. So the ones in the back are actually going to grow to be about 14 feet. Then the next set of, or the next row of sunflowers will be about 12 feet. And the ones in front are anywhere from six to 10. I don't know if you remember, but this area right along here in the front, when I originally showed you this garden, I had mentioned that I had planted calendula. And look at it, it is popping up with a vengeance. And so there are three different types of calendula in there and I can't wait to see the colors start to pop. I want to take a quick look at my pawpaw tree and look at these leaves. So amazing. When I planted these and I did a video on that, it looked like I was planting twigs. But look at it. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the pollinators for a pawpaw tree are actually flies, not bees. So pretty. Take a look at this mulberry tree. For those of you that don't know what a mulberry fruiting tree is, they actually have fruit that are very similar to a blackberry except the fruit that this mulberry tree will give off will be slightly sweeter. And you can see that there are tons of berries on this tree. So the next thing that I'm gonna to have to do to protect this tree is to cover it in netting so that the birds don't eat the berries before I have a chance to have some. All along the food forest, along the edge, I planted strawberry corn and glass gem corn. And it is starting to come up. How cool is this going to be to have 
these really unique corn growing on the edge of the food forest. So beside me here is my mint patch. I believe it's spearmint, but I'll have to double check with my parents who gave me these cuttings. So I purposely planted it here knowing full well that it's an invasive plant. I want it to take over this area. I purposely planted it in the food forest so that it could have room to grow so that I could dry as much of it as possible. One of the best things that I like doing in the cool weather seasons is having mint tea. I usually dry my mint, make a mint tea and add a little bit of honey and it is to die for. So the other kinds of mint that I've planted this year are um, chocolate mint, which adds a really nice flavor to your tea, as well as orange mint. Now orange mint, you can actually slice it up really paper thin and throw it in your salad just for that added orange mint flavor and it is to die for. So here's a look at the original raised bed garden as I walk up to it. What I want to show you is this amazing sorrel plant here that I have. Now it has gone to seed. And for those of you that have ever tried any kind of lettuce, that has gone to seed, it is really bitter. Now, I was out here with my husband this morning, just walking through the garden with our coffee, and he asked me what it was, and I suggested that he try it. Well, within two seconds, he was actually spitting it out, and his exact words were, it tastes a little bit like rhubarb, but a lot bitter, <laughs> a lot more bitter. This bed here I built last year all on my own and I had the intention of using it as my mint bed. I was gonna plant all different kinds of mint in this bed and then like any gardener does, I changed my plans. However, mint is coming up everywhere in this bed. So the squash plants that I've planted in here as well as that beautiful dahlia that's in the corner are just going to have to battle with the mint this year. So up in the hill garden I seem to be having some issues with squash and cucumber beetle bugs but down here they don't seem to be bothering any of my squash plants. They do have a little bit of sun damage, you can see that, but we have had crazy sun weather this year so far. So I'm not surprised that some of the plants are getting a bit of sun damage. Now, these plants here are baby Pam pumpkin plants and they are amazing for making pumpkin pies or just mashing up and adding to whatever you want to add it to. I actually added it the other day to my asparagus soup and it was delicious. Here in this bed I have fairy tale squash plant. Now I've never grown this before but who doesn't want to grow? fairy tale squash plants. <laughs> so this should be quite interesting. Now behind it I have some jalapeno plants, jalapeno pepper plants. So and the bed right behind that is where I have planted all of my hot pepper plants. And in this bed next to the fairy tale squash are some eggplants that I just planted and they seem to be coming along really well. There is a bit of sun damage on them as well, but other than that, I think that they're doing really well. So while I'm out here, I'm going to throw some markers down for my eggplant. Like I mentioned, I was out here with my husband this morning, just walking around, checking everything out. And he said to me, well, what are those? And I said, well, they're eggplant. As if like, how come you don't know that? <laughs> and he kind of said, well, why don't you have markers so that people know that? And I said, you're right, because I know that they're eggplant, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to remember the variety that they are three weeks from now. <laughs> so I have squash plants that I actually had extra of, and 
I looked at the cup and I thought, okay, I'll remember what this is and I'll plant it here. Remember, Sherry, when you go inside, write it down on your map. And of course I forgot. So I'm gonna show you those squash plants because they are beautiful. They are variegated and I can't wait to see what they end up being. But in the meantime, I went down into the basement and I grabbed um, some extra paint sticks that we had and I just wrote what the eggplant variety was. I took some Verifane and sprayed a bit over top of the name in the hopes that that will keep the name so that once I start harvesting off of these eggplants, I'll be able to look at the marker and know exactly what they are. You'll notice that it did take me a second to remember which was which, which is exactly why you need markers in your garden. So here's one of the beds that have my garlic as well as the one just north of it. Now you'll notice that some of them have some yellowing leaves around the bottom. There are a couple reasons why your garlic might have some of this yellowing happening. So there are three reasons why your garlic leaves might be yellowing. Now it is nothing to be concerned about and it's actually fixable. So the first reason that your garlic might be going a little bit yellow is because it's lacking in water. The second reason might be that it is a little bit deficient in nitrogen. So just like onions, Garlic need to be fertilized as well. And when they start to be a little bit more deficient in that nitrogen, their leaves might turn yellow. Now that doesn't mean that the garlic is no good and that you, know, you should rip it out. It just means to give it a little bit of nitrogen and you're good to go. The third reason that you might be finding that some of your garlic is starting to yellow is because when you planted it in the fall, it was fairly cool out and you did everything right you planted them in you covered it with mulch everything's good to go you walked away and then we got a really warm spell and your garlic actually started to grow i think some of my garlic actually grew about three or four inches and then we had the cold spell and then winter hit and so sometimes when that happens, that growth that comes up during that period of time where you have a warm spell means that, that those leaves are then going to yellow a little bit quicker than the rest of the actual leaves that are growing. Now, like I said, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your garlic. I know that some of my garlic has some yellowing leaves because it all my garden is lacking in water. I'm trying to do my best to water it as much as I can. I have uh, wood chip mulch everywhere in the hopes that I could water it probably every third day, but we haven't had a really good rain in weeks. Now it did rain about three days ago, but the amount of rain that we got was not enough. I knew that it wasn't enough as soon as the sun came out. And I said, that's it, that's all we're getting? We need more rain here. So I know that my garlic needs a bit more water. I know that I've been fertilizing it, so that's not its issue. I also know, like I mentioned, that it did grow in the fall. So between the lack of water and the growth that I had, that accounts for the yellow leaves that I'm getting. So this here is the hot pepper raised beds, and I'm just going to zero in on something I see. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. These peppers are going to make amazing cowboy candy once they're done. So in this box here with some onions and carrots and some eggplant, I have zucchini rounds. And I don't know if you can see it right in there. Now I've never grown zucchini rounds before, but I have an amazing recipe that led me to wanting to grow these. So over here, 
in this bed. The front plants here that we have are mashed potato squash. And I believe that, I'm, yes. You can see in here that we have some already starting. Now, I believe that mashed potato squash is very similar, or if not the same thing, is delicat delicata, I think is how you pronounce it. Now, behind them, we have Brussels sprouts. And again, do not take into account my spacing in this bed. I ended up with way too many Brussels sprouts more than what my original blueprint of the garden plan was supposed to be and i decided i was planting them anyways this is the plant that i was telling you about that is very variegated how beautiful is this now this actually started to to look like this in the basement when i was actually growing these and i thought Hmm. I wonder if that's just because there's a lot of heat down there. Wasn't really sure what was kind of going on, but it's continued to grow leaves that are beautifully variegated. These are my new waist high raised beds that we built out of the recycled barn material and I am astonished with how well everything is growing in these beds. I, I just can't believe that these beds only have eight inches of actual compost soil in them. The rest of it was filled with uh, the hoo-hoo culture method and Everything that I have planted in them loves what I've planted. Like, look at it. I just can't get over at how beautiful the greenery is. Now, I look at this from my bedroom window and I'm in Every awe. single one of these raised beds, new raised beds, I've planted onions in the center of them. So these beds are four feet wide by 10 feet long. So what I did is I planted um, two feet, uh, two feet across of onions and then roughly nine feet. So two by nine in each bed. And I think I roughly got a hundred onions planted in each bed. Now, the reason that I decided to do onions in these beds is because they are shallow rooted vegetables. And I knew that I only had eight inches of soil to play with. And I didn't want to start planting really deep rooted vegetables in here because they were going to go past that soil level that I have and into logs and wood chips and leaves. and. And I just wasn't sure that they would do really well. So what I've done is onions in each bed. I did beets in three of the beds, radishes in two of the beds. Um, and then, well, you end up with a lot of plants, extra plants, and you just kind of start throwing them wherever. And that's kind of what I did with this bed. So let's take a look at some of the different things that I have in this bed right now. So here's a look at bed number four from the west side. And so here on the end, I've planted some dead nettle. They have really nice white or pink flowers, depending on the variety you get. And I actually can't remember which one I got but it'll look really nice when it starts to overhang the corner of the bed. And it's just really decorative. It's not something that you can eat. Um, these here are spicy basils and I can't wait to make some pesto from them. So I'm hoping that the sun and the drought that we're having hasn't uh, stopped their growth. So here on the end is a cream of the crop 
squash plant and it is a bush variety i thought that it would be really nice to plant it on the corner so that if any of these leaves started to get really big and bushy it would kind of overhang the side as well and just give it a really nice design look so you can see all the onions are in there here we have four different pepper plants now three of them actually have names <laughs> so the habanada we have paprika and then we have shishito and we have a shishito pepper on there now the fourth one doesn't have a tag because i said to myself sherry you'll remember what that is and i actually can't remember it may be um either a yellow monster or a red candy cane but I can't remember right now. I guess we'll find out when we find out. Now these here are finger carrots. Like how gorgeous is this? So I know that I need to go in and actually start thinning them so that I get a really good harvest out of them. Um, but that's a not today project. <laughs> here we have um, a tromboncino plant. So it is really taking off. And you can see that it is starting to, oh, okay. So I want you to really take a look at what is in here. Can you see, I don't know if the camera is going to, those are my squash beetle bugs and so that's the reason why I brought out the yellow sticky tapes so we're actually going to put one here because they are climbing all over this plant and I really want this plant to do well and to take off and start trellising up so that all the veg can hang from it. So one of the things that I am going to try this year, a viewer actually suggested that I use these um, yellow sticky pads, things that you might use if you were growing in a grow room and you had pesty little flies that were flying around and you wanted to get rid of them. So I am willing to try anything because there are these beetles everywhere. Now, they haven't thankfully made their way into the raised bed, the original raised bed, but that's not to mean or to say that they won't end up there. So I have a whole bunch of these. I thought, why not try it? I grabbed some paint sticks. Um, it comes with a little hole in it. So I stuck the little twist tie through it around the paint stick. And then I used a bit of hockey tape. And basically I'm going to rip off the sheet here and then the back as well and so it becomes a sticky mess but I am actually going to stick it like that so that the back actually has a lot of the stickiness showing through as well um, and then I'm just going to stick the bottom in near my squash plant where I just saw all those bugs and hopefully this will slow them down enough until they go off and they leave. I can tell you that last year these bugs actually killed around 10 ground cherry plants that I had and I don't know why they went after them but they did and they destroyed them. So I want to make sure that the plants that I've worked so hard on growing and then have been babying in these beds survive to provide me a harvest. So I'm going to start sticking these in wherever I see a bunch of them. So here is a real quick sneak peek at my Ruth Stout potato bed. Look at how much growth is coming up. Now they were a little late to start, but once they started, now I will do an update video on this because there are some things that I learned along the way. This is the start of the hill garden. And so all along here are my vining, 
buttercup squash, butter, um, orange butternut, some Boston Morrow squash. They're all going to be vining and so I'm going to allow them to vine out into this area here which is purposely what that area is for. Now all along the other side as well as two rows up here are my tomatoes. And so I'm happy to say that they're actually doing so much better than I anticipated them doing when I planted them. I was actually really upset thinking that they weren't going to survive. Now, that's not to say that they all have survived because they haven't. I will just show you here. Brad's Atomic Grape, you'll notice that there is no tomato plant here because it didn't make it. However, I did plant seeds and I want to show you right here is one of them and over here is another. So that is promising. So this area here all along this row or these two rows here as well as this row here are squash plants. So in the front here I have Blue Magic Hubbard as well as Green Hubbard. Now I haven't tried Green Hubbard but Blue Magic Hubbard was one of our family's favorite last year. Then in right around here I have the Delicata squash as well as Cream of the Crop squash. Um, further down I have Yellow Zucchini. Now the beetles have just had a heyday on them. It's a bit heartbreaking to be honest. I mean the great thing about squash is that I can plant seeds out here and you know they will pop up um, and I'll still get a harvest so I'm not gonna cry a river about it. Similar to squash plants or squash seeds you can plant cucumber seeds throughout the season as well especially if you've already planted your seedlings and something has wiped them out or they're just not doing very good and you want to make sure that you're going to get some kind of harvest so my cucumber plants that i planted over here in the hill garden don't look great and i happen to think that it is a combination of those beetles as well as the sun because this garden up here almost gets a complete full sun, I think that it was just too much for them without having those rainy days in between. So I'm gonna plant some seeds in between the half living seedlings that I already have in the ground here in the hopes that, you know, I'll get something at least. So I'm doing a miniature white seed from um, Baker Creek. I'm doing a pickling cucumber from a backyard KW backyard vegetable seeds as well as a white wonder from and my gardener so I'm just going to plant a few I'm not going to really even care about spacing because I don't know if the germination rate is going to be 100% and I want to make sure I get something okay so all of my sticky tapes have been put out my cucumber seeds have been planted my eggplant markers are out i hope you've enjoyed some of the info about my garden that i've given you i want to end this garden tour with showing you a special find that my husband and i realized this morning and i think that it's going to be really interesting to watch over the next week or two to see how the fruit ripens so let's take a look at a section of the pool fence before you leave me. Thanks for spending time with me. So this is the east side of our pool fence. And last year, we really started to dig in every single runner that came from these strawberry plants. But what I want to show you, look at all 
the strawberries. They are everywhere. Like seriously, everywhere. Just waiting to ripen. Like the more I move this, the more I see 